Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Wendy and I'm with Inspire Ministries and I'm so glad that you are here today. Because today I don't want to teach you anything. I don't want to share any long passages with you. I don't want to even read scripture with you. I just want to sit down and have a conversation with you. You know, it dawned on me the other day that here we sit in the month of December getting ready to embark upon a brand new year. And I don't know about you, but with that, for me at least, comes a lot of resolutions, comes a lot of things on my plate, things that I want to do, things that I want to plan, things that I want to look forward to, changes that I want to make in my life. And if you are anything like me, you are probably doing that same thing. As we look forward to 2024, I can't even believe that I'm saying that. I want to just sit down and have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with you. You know, in recent weeks, I have been seeing a lot of things on social media. In fact, I had somebody reach out to me just yesterday and tell me, listen, I really, really want to get off of social media, but I still want to have all of the things that you produce on a regular basis. I still want to see your videos. I still want to see the content that you post in our Facebook group. How can I do that? I really need a break from social media. Now, I am the same way. There comes a time in my life, probably every six to eight weeks, if I'm being honest with you, where I just want to completely get off of social media. I want to shut down YouTube, I want to turn off Instagram, and I don't even want to scroll through Facebook. And so I understand that. I understand that many of us are in this boat where we see too much, we know too much, we get exposed to too much, and there's just too much out there that is consuming our mind and eliminating the necessary things in our life, or at least giving us an excuse to be too consumed with what's going on in the world around us. But I have been seeing some things as of late, and I just wanted to really sit down and, and share my heart with you and let you know what I am praying for you about as we embark upon a new year. You know, some of the things that I've been seeing uh, break my heart. They break my heart because what I think that we see on a regular basis are people who believe that they're good people. They believe that they haven't committed any big crime. They are nice to their neighbors. They might be even, even giving people. They might go to church on a regular basis. They might sing worship songs in their car. And they think that they're going to heaven. They think that they are on their way to heaven when in reality they don't really know Jesus at all. And so I, I want to come on here today. And again, I just want to share my heart. And I want to tell you what my prayer is for you you specifically moving forward in the new year. I pray, friends, that Jesus becomes real to you. It's one of the questions that I have asked on repeat for all of the ladies who have taken my Zoom classes over the course of the last year. I always generally start with that question and then I end the class with that question. Is Jesus real to you? And I want to ask you the same thing today. Is he real to you? Do you know him? I don't mean do you know about him. I don't mean do you know a few great passages of scripture. I don't mean have you memorized passages of scripture. I don't mean are you good friends with your pastor. I don't mean are you involved in a small group where maybe you go through Bible studies throughout the year. I don't mean do you belong to a women's group. I don't mean do you pray. I don't mean that you really believe that you are raising your kids to love the Lord because you're homeschooling them. I mean, do you know the Jesus of the scriptures? Is he real to you? Do you know him? Have you studied the scriptures? Have you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Have you read the accounts of the life of Jesus? Have you studied the ways of our Lord? Do you know his heart? 
have you adjusted to his mindset? Do you have his inclinations that have now shifted to be your inclinations? Are his affections your affections? Does your heart break for what breaks his heart? Have you aligned your living to his will? Are you seeking every day after righteousness and holiness and purity? Do you know him? Is he real to you? Is he the same for you on Monday night that he is on Sunday morning? Is he the same one for you when you wake up with those small babies who need you right now, Mama, at 2 o'clock on a Wednesday morning? Is he the same one then for you as he is for you when you go to Bible study with your Bible study friends on Thursday night? Is he the same God that is there in the valley with you, the same one who is in the valley with you as he was with you on the top of that mountain last week? Is he real to you? Do you know him? Is he personal? Is he not just your savior? Is he your friend? Is he the one that you think about? Is he the one that you go to? Is he the one that you trust? Is he the one who knows you and has called you by name? Is he the voice that you recognize in the dry land that we live in? Is he your only source of hope? Is he the one in whom you find your strength? Are you edified by him and his words every day? Are you surrounding yourself with like-minded people who point you to Jesus, not just by what they say, but by what they do, by what they offer you, by the encouragement that they pour into you? Is Jesus your inspiration for living? Do you long to think the way that he thinks? When you come to the scriptures, do you long to be changed by what you read? Or are they just words on a page? Is he real to you? Do you love him? Do you honor him? Do you seek ways of intimately being with him every day? Do you want to share the good news with everyone you know? Are you concerned at night with the salvation of the souls that you've been entrusted to love? and to support, and to encourage, and to live with? And do you pray for them regularly? Is Jesus real to you? Do you wake up in the morning, and he is the first thought on your mind? Is he the very last thing you think about before you lay your head on your pillow at night? Is he real to you? Has he been with you in the storms of your life? And you know that you know that you know without a doubt, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that without his abiding presence, you would never have made it through that valley. Do you sing of his goodness? Do you read his word and when you do, something leaps out at you and you know that that was written just for you because you read as you listen for his voice because you know his words bring life 
and without him and without them, you have no breath in your lungs. Is he real to you? Can you see him even when you can't visually apprehend his presence? Is he real to you? Do you talk with him? Engage with him? Have a conversation with him over coffee as you would a friend? Is he real to you? I don't mean this fictitious character in a book, this good man that once lived upon the earth and did good and died for our sins. I mean, do you know the Jesus of the scriptures because he has saved you? He has redeemed you. He has resurrected the dry places of your life. Can you look back and you see evidence of his hand upon your life all the days that you've been living so far? Is he real to you? Is he the very breath in your lungs? Is he the very reason you get up in the morning? Do you long to share him with others? Do you long for delighting him? Does it break your heart when you sin? When you do something that's wrong, you say something that's wrong, you engage with a practice that's wrong, you hate on somebody or belittle somebody or share in gossip with someone else, does it break your heart in the moment that it's happening even? Because you would do anything to protect your relationship with him. Because breaking his heart is the very last thing that you would ever want to do. Does death not scare you? Does being with him encourage your heart and cause your heart to burn and cause your feet to walk in such a way that honors him and glorifies him with every step that you take? Is he real to you? Is he real to you? Because listen, I look out in my world that I live in and I, and I see people who believe that they are living right. They believe that because they go to church on Sunday, because they worship in their car on Monday morning, because they're kind to strangers, because they give money to the poor, because they work at a soup kitchen, because they raise their children to pray a certain prayer, because they go to small group, because they're part of a Bible study, and even because they pray and they read the scriptures and, and they know the passages that we all know by heart but haven't rightly applied them and live as foreigners of Jesus by the way that they live and the way that they act and the way that they behave. They don't demonstrate fruit in their life. There's no evidence that the Lord has taken up residence within their heart and they've been changed and renewed from the inside out. I fear for people. I, I, I honestly do. I fear for people all the time. I pray for people all the time. Because I believe that we have this idea because we are good that we're going to heaven. But can I tell you that's wrong? Do you know Jesus? And more importantly than that is, does he know you? Does he know you? Does he recognize your voice? Does he know you? And do you know him? Is he real to you? 
Has he entered into your story in such a way that he is now front and center? He doesn't take a back seat. He, does, it doesn't, he doesn't wait until next week. He is the same today as he was then, as he is tomorrow. He is filled with mercy and grace and love. And because of that mercy and that grace and that love, he has changed you. Something in you has shifted. Something in you has changed. Something in you knows that you will never be the same ever again. Is he real to you? Do you love him? Do you live to emulate King Jesus? Is he real? Does he know you? Do you have his heart and his mind in your heart and in your mind? Do you no longer want to be a part of your old life? You've said goodbye to those old ways. You've said goodbye to the sinful way of living. You've made a decision to follow him, to say yes, to do the hard work because he's worth it. You've seen him resurrect. You've seen him redeem. You've seen his strength demonstrated in your weakness. Do you long to be near to him? Do you feel his presence upon your life? Are you marked by the very work of Christ on the cross? Do you bear the evidence that what he died for was not in vain? Do you love him? Do you serve him and do you know him? Listen, if you don't, I'd love to talk with you. If you don't know him, if, if somehow he has not become real to you, I pray that you get with someone or you surround yourself with someone who can share the truth of the gospel with you. And if you don't know him, I pray that you would find him this year. I pray that it would be more than just finding a cute little word to live by for the year 2024. Well, listen, there's, no, there, there's nothing wrong with having a word to live by. We should have goals. We should set goals for our life. We should want to grow in our knowledge of him. We should want to read the scriptures. We should want to go to church. We should want to praise him on Monday morning in our car. We should want to share the gospel message with others. But it cannot replace the intimacy that he longs to have with you. It, it, cannot, re it cannot replace the relationship with him that should be front and center in your life. Do you know him? Because listen, what I know to be true is if you don't know him and he is not real to you and you don't know why it is that you believe what you believe and you do not know the Jesus of the scriptures, nothing that you do this side of eternity, no good that you do, no serving will be of value. It won't, it won't mean anything. You can sit in Zoom classes all day long. You can go to church every single day of your life. You can sit in Bible study after Bible study, and it will not matter until he is real to you. Until you know him and he knows you. And so my prayer for 2024, for you and for me, is that Jesus would become real. And every day he would become more real than he was the day before that we would know him and that he would know us. That we would live with no regret that we followed him all the days of our life. That we let go of the world 
that we clung to Jesus and we lived for him. That is my prayer for you. It's my prayer for all of us moving forward. Is he real to you? It's a question that we should be asking every day of our life. Is he real to you? Do you know him? And the most important thing is, does he know you? Because I don't know about you, but I don't want to get to the end of my life and believe that I was a good person and hear him say, I don't know who you are. Can we be brave and bold in our pursuit this year, this new year, fresh, clean slate, to say, Jesus, come. Come into my mess, come into my chaos, and be my Lord. I want to know you. And most importantly, I want you to know me. I love you, friend, and I am praying for you as we go into the new year praying that he becomes real. Pray that you are changed by his presence. And pray that every single day of your life is lived to honor and glorify him. I love you, friend. I'm praying for you. And until my next video, I pray that you have an awesome day with Jesus. Bye, friend.